And Sakir Starmer has weighed into the free speech debate after Essex Police defended itself for investigating journalist Alison Pearson over one of her social media posts. The Prime Minister said police should tackle violent crime, not tweets. And this comes as it has emerged that children as young as nine years old are being investigated by police for name-calling. The Education Secretary, Bridget Phillipson, joins us now. Very good morning to you, morning. Good Bridget morning. Phillipson. Um, this has been raised in the wake of the investigation into Alison Pearson for a, for a different type of offence. But what has emerged, the Times um, put in requests to police forces and found that there, there were multiple cases of children being recorded as having committed non-crime hate incidents. They're meant to be incidents clearly motivated by intentional hostility. But there is a, a, a case where I think we think that they're nine years old who used a word for a primary school pupil, friend or fellow primary school pupil, a word which, in normal parlance, a teacher would just say that's not acceptable. Also, two schoolgirls who said another student smelled like fish also investigated as a non-crime hate incident. How are we policing children's behaviour in the classroom? Hello, good morning. I, what I would say is I've read the same reports that you've seen, but that's the only knowledge that I have of those exact incidents that were reported. And I think it is important to understand that there can, can sometimes be a wider context. Perhaps there is, perhaps there isn't, but I really wouldn't know on the basis of um, some elements of a report in a newspaper. I do know, however, that behaviour in the classroom is an, is an increasing concern of teachers who say that it's making making them consider whether they want to remain in the classroom, whether they want to remain as teachers. Well, to the point that they call the police? Well, I, to the I'd point be... that they call the police? Well, if, if there are serious incidents, and sadly there can sometimes be very serious incidents, including violence in the classroom, Hannah, which is completely unacceptable... In... No, I'm sorry, well, you're we're asking not me talking should about the serious incidents. You're asking me if teachers should, should call the police. I'm just saying there can be occasion where that is required. Yes, what I'm keep... not able... What I'm, I'm not sure able to true. do is provide answers on specific newspaper reports I'm for sure. which I don't have full knowledge. Mm, I'm sure it's true that with serious incidents there may be a case for calling the police, but that's to dodge the point. The point here is that the police were called. You say you don't want to comment on the particular case. Well, give it a go. Um, where a kid called another kid said that they smelt like fish. Surely you would accept, on the face of it, that that's preposterous for the police to be involved. As a point of principle, and I, I mean this sincerely, I think it's unwise for politicians to get involved in discussions around operational policing matters. Uh, police forces are held to account for decisions that they take, that's as it should be. So if people feel that there has been overreach here or what has happened is unacceptable, then that should be pursued properly. But I don't think it helps the work of the police for politicians to comment, comment on operational matters. No, it is right the that they are operationally, is... indep they are yeah. operationally independent yeah. and for good reason. Yeah, but the point is that you're the education secretary, <laughs> so you're in charge of what happens in our classrooms. And the question is, should police have a place policing the language that use, is used in classrooms, or should teachers and head teachers and the education secretary do that, so... not police forces? So two points. As you say, I am responsible for what happens in our classrooms. I'm not responsible for the police forces in our country. But where it comes to what happens within our classrooms, I do know that, sadly, behaviour has been getting out of hand in some cases in recent years. What I also know from some of the cases I've seen where there, have been, where there has been the tough decision taken to exclude a, a child from school, sometimes permanently... The way in which it might be presented in the media is sometimes not the full reality as, of what has taken place. So I just, I approach this with a degree of care in wanting to make sure that I have full facts in the answers that I give you. That's not because I'm seeking have to you avoid asked, your question. Have you asked it's, for those? I will be asking for those, but as I say, that this is a matter that overlaps with the police. I'm not responsible for the actions of police forces. I am responsible for what happens within England schools. And within England schools, I am concerned about some of the behaviour issues that we see that is driving teachers out of the classroom. But what's happening in the classrooms that you're responsible for is that uniformed officers are coming to interview nine-year-olds for the kind of language which teachers should be more than capable of dealing with. That's happening on your watch, and you won't 
don't talk about it. It's extraordinary. Well, that's, that's what you have concluded on the basis of a report in the newspaper. If you, if you don't mind, I'd rather go away and have a look to understand the full facts, because what I've discovered as Education Secretary is sometimes that the way that cases can be prevented around action that's been taken against pupils sometimes doesn't have the full context well, you say go around away and it. have a look, just a minute, you, you said at the beginning of the interview that you already had read those reports. Have you not, checked, them? Have you not checked them yet? I read them. I read them yesterday. That was the first time I'd read them. So I'll happily look at it. I am concerned about behaviour. That's what I'm saying to you. But equally, you're saying to me that the police don't have a rule. It's look. I think what matters here is tackling some of these issues that teachers do face around behaviour. Mm -hmm. They have a tough job, as do the police. I don't think it necessarily helps the work of teachers or police for politicians to speculate when we don't well, have the full facts that. in front of us. Can we move on to November the 29th, 11 days away now? Uh, this is uh, when we have the free Commons vote on the bill for assisted dying. Um, it does seem that support's evaporating. Wes Streeting, the Health Secretary, told us here last week on this programme that he will be voting against. Angela Rayner, the Deputy Prime Minister, has said she'll be voting against. Uh, so is the, the Transport Secretary, Louise Haig. Um, how will you be voting and why? So, as you'll know, these are matters for individual members of Parliament. The government doesn't take a position. The government is neutral in this and will respect the views of Parliament as expressed on the 29th of November. Back in 2015, when this was last considered by Parliament, I voted against. And in the time since, I haven't changed my mind on that topic. I, I do respect those who hold different views. There are a range of opinions. These are difficult and sensitive issues where each of us as individual members of Parliament, will reflect on what we think is best. And I know people are approaching that uh, in, a, in a responsible and constructive way. Well, Mr Streeting shared with us uh, his reasons for voting against. What are your reasons for voting against? I, w I, will, sh I will set out some reasons, but I I'm not going to go into lots of detail, if you'll forgive me, mainly because I think these are for individual MPs and I wouldn't want to give the impression of seeking to influence what is a, a tough decision. And I appreciate views that are well-founded on both sides. Primarily my view back in 2015 was that I, w I was concerned about making sure that there are safeguards in place and that remains my view now that I, I, I remain concerned on that, in that in that area. I know those who are setting out the legislation argue differently and that it's for people, individual members of parliament to reach their own conclusions on this topic and I don't want to be suggesting for one second that I'm seeking to influence the views of other colleagues who I know are weighing up how they approach it in a constructive and, you know, sensible way. OK, Bridget Phillipson, the Education Secretary, we appreciate your time this morning and we would very much like to talk to you again once you have investigated um, those incidents against children in classrooms. Um, thank you very much indeed for being with us. Thank you.